In a world of hashtag moments, Insta holidays, and overwhelming social media moments, it is all too often that we see all of the glory and we don't know the story. Well, I am here today to tell you my story. Have you ever heard of the saying, failing to plan is a plan to fail? <laughs> well, I will tell you that I won through failure I call it my 10 small business commandments. It's everything that I learned on my journey to success. And let me be clear about success. Success for me is being great or making every effort to be great in all that I do. I am a Christian, I am a mother, I am a wife, and I am an entrepreneur. I started my business through a series of unfortunate events, so you can call me an accidental entrepreneur. As a kid, I sold Girl Scout cookies, I was selling pencils to people on the street, I had a babysitting club, parents, PSA, pay attention to your children. I was telling vivid <laughs> stories all the while disrupting classrooms and being sent to the principal's office. <laughs> and I went to Catholic school. And for those of you who know Catholic school, they don't play. <laughs> there is no such thing as coloring outside of the lines, sudden outbursts. It is very much the atmosphere of sit in your seat, be still, and speak when spoken to. But I was ADD, and I was creative, and I loved to sing. And growing up in a household where parents killed creative, not because they didn't love me, but they couldn't see beyond the four walls that they were built within, so they did everything in their power to not let us end up like them, to not let us be average, to not let us be regular. So they sent us to Catholic schools and private schools and built the framework around us to be two things. We had two options growing up. It was to be a doctor or a lawyer. And my parents sent me to these schools and I took all of the courses and I behaved. I did everything they told me to do. When they told me to major in chemistry, I did that. When they told me to major in economics, I did that. And when they saw those report cards coming home and they saw the trajectory was not on the pathway to make me a doctor or a lawyer, <laughs> they said, all right, we're gonna do the next best thing. They sent me to business school. And in business school, I was able to mask my creative. I played it safe. I did all of the right things. I went on to get jobs that gave me a 401k, stock options, free housing. I played it safe. And for five years, I did this. And after five years, I said, I am not going to play it safe anymore. And I went on and pursued a career in television. And in television, it was great. I was immersed in a world of creativity. I looked left and I looked right and everyone around me was creative. I was able to fit in. And it was at that moment and I said, this is who I am, this is what I want to be. So I went on and I enjoyed myself and I went from show to show, gig to gig. I worked for Lucky Magazine, I worked for MTV, TLC and Discovery Health. And as TV and magazines took a turn for the worse and shows and jobs started to disappear, so did my finances. And so through another series of events, I was discovered by a PR agency who read about me in a magazine. I was deemed the lucky girl because of my fashion sense, but what they didn't know behind the scenes is that I couldn't afford anything on the pages of those magazines that I was working for. So I took tablecloths and vintage fabric that I found in my grandmother's basement and made my own outfits, and I was discovered to be the lucky girl. And I worked at this PR agency for one year in complete and utter misery because I was average. I was regular. I went to work every day at 8.40 and I got off at 4 o'clock, but I was able to pick my daughter up from school and put dinner on the stove and go to the park and do very regular things. And then I said, I can't do this anymore. So I left once again my safety net of a full-time job and a schedule to get another job in television. I went back to television, and after three glorious months, I found out I was pregnant with our second child, and I was just in complete bliss. And then one day, they brought us all into a room where we thought we were getting this great news. It was great news. They sat us all down and gave each of us an envelope with one week's pay and said, we're taking all of our business elsewhere, and you are all fired. 
So I decided then that I was not going to let anyone else dictate my steps or dictate what my days were doing. I found myself unemployed, married, with one child and one on the way. So remember when I told you about that plan. It was at that moment where I decided to design a plan that was for me. I worked over the next five years feverishly banging on everyone's door, building my network, cultivating a brand, and now I own a multimedia communications agency staffed by 11 amazing creatives and with an all-star roster of clients from Uber Technologies, Dell, Forbes Magazine, and Serena Williams. And these are all of the things that I've learned on my journey to success. One, be authentic. People want the real you. No matter what you look like, feel like, taste like, they want the real you. Two, be honest with yourself and other people. You never know who you're inspiring by talking about your mishaps. Three, always be ready with the next steps plan. Number four, know your strengths, weaknesses, limitations, and most importantly, your unique value proposition. What is your competitive advantage? How are you differentiating yourself? And how are you going to stand out from the crowd? Number five is really important. Surround yourself with people that believe in you, your purpose, your proposition, and your plan. And number six and seven are really near and dear to me. Number six is be transparent. People have to see through you to get to you. But number seven, know when to fog up your glass. As a person in the public eye, I will tell you that I am open to praise and accolades, but I am also susceptible to people with very negative intentions. We call them internet trolls. <laughs> so you have to know when to create boundaries and establish walls for yourself. Number eight, be careful about complaining. Running your mouth will get you into trouble. Not every hello and how are you is an opportunity to vent. Number nine, make yourself a commodity. People want more of you when they have access to less of you. And number 10, make a realistic plan for yourself. When you want to be great, you have to design the steps that it will take in order to get there. So you see, the journey to success is an app. It is an app that we all have on our phones, but it comes without the instructions of Google Maps. You will miss turns, you will go on dead ends, you'll end up on a couple of cul-de-sacs without that little voice that says, recalculating or rerouting. <laughs> These were all of the things that I learned. And for me, some of them were taught to me in a very ugly way, but they were all attributed to great growth. And I will tell you that in all that you do, everyone, need, everyone needs to see the story along with the glory. I am Rakia Reynolds. <laughs>